definitely one of the most common things that you're going to get asked to do at a blues jam is to play the slow blues. Now, this is not to be confused with a slow shuffle, right? We talked about how to count a shuffle, but a slow blues means it's a 4-4, in this case, a 12-8 groove. We call this 12-8, but we could call this a 4-4 groove with an eighth note triplet, right? They're both going to be the same thing. You've heard this a lot, and we're going to go over some examples of how the most common ways that this is played, and then also give you some variations to spice it up a little bit, something that you can twist it up. Um, we'll start out by looking at the most common way it's played. So let's do that. When I play my G chord. This is just going to be a 12-8 slow blues in G, we would call this. So we're doing a G chord, C9, D9, our standard 1-4-5 progression in G. Um, we've, we've got the quick change to the 4 chord, which means in measure 2 we're going right to the 4 chord. Okay, And then in our turnaround, it's just going to be a 1-4-1-5. One, one, so it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If you're a beginner, you just start off playing the chords. But what you're going to immediately find out is you hear a lot of guys doing that lick in there. So when we do that lick, what is that lick? That's what we call sliding sixths, because from here to here is the interval of a sixth. So when I slide those up, I go from the third fret, this note, and this note. Now you see I'm skipping the third string. I'm playing the fourth string and the second string, right? So I'm skipping this one. Now the way I'm doing it is I'm leaning my second finger on that and killing it. So I'm muting that string. So now you can also do this with hybrid picking, which means you're playing the low note with your pick and the top note with your middle finger. That kind of a pinch feel. You could do it with both with your fingers as well. Because I'm doing a lot of strumming, I go ahead and do it this way. So that's off of our G chord or our G7. Because remember, when we're playing a major blues, we can play either a major chord or a dominant seventh chord. That always works. So when we go to the C9, our four chord, we're going to do that same sliding sixth lick, except we're going to move it over a string. So on the first string and the third string. Okay? So we've got the same. And when we go to the D, we would do the same thing off of our D chord, our D9. Same slide. So anytime we're on a root six chord here, we can slide off of the second and fourth strings. Anytime we're on the root five chord, we slide off the first and third strings. Okay? Now, what we're going to find is we might want to have it sound a little bit more interesting, and we can get that sound by using some different chords. So our first alternate chord that we can use is this seventh chord. This seventh chord, a lot of guys call this the jazz seventh chord just because of the voicing of it, but it's a really nice shape, and it might be a little bit hard to get used to if you're not playing it because you're using all four fingers. First finger there, second, your pinky's going to go out there, and your third. But why we really like this shape for this particular version of the blues is that if I take off my first finger and take off my fourth finger, voila, there are my two fingers that I need in place to do my slide. So it's all about efficiency, right? You don't want to work any harder than you have to on this stuff. You want to make it simple as you can. So if I put those fingers back on, I've got the seventh chord. I take them off, I can do the slide. Pretty snazzy. So we've got that as an option, but we might want to even get more interesting with our chords. So what can we do? Well, let's look at an option for a ninth chord off of our one chord, off of our G. This is a great ninth chord that everybody should know. It's, it's really one that you'll run into a lot. Um, there's no root note on this particular ninth chord. So I'm not playing the G, even though it's a G chord. Now that's real important to learn because a lot of times we don't want to play the root note. You know, we stay off the root note. Even if you're playing this full bar chord, if you're playing with a bass player who's already playing that G note, you don't really need to hit that G note. So even if you play that full chord, don't strum it. Maybe start strumming from the, you know, the top four or the top five. That's why you see a lot of guys play this chord like this, right? They play this shape or this shape because they're not playing the sixth string. We don't need that root in there. So for this ninth chord, great example of not needing the root in there because the bass player has that covered. So this shape is just a G dominant nine chord, starting on our three as our root, right? And what we want to do with this is still do the same slide. So I can take this finger off and this finger off, and there I am, once again, ready to do that same slide. 
But another option we have here is if I take just my first finger off, but leave those three there, I'm adding this note right here, and that basically gives me a ninth chord. So that is my ninth, and when I slide it up and I can keep that finger on, I get a slide up to a sixth chord. So now we got... Hear how that's more full? It's just got a lot more richness to it. And that's, you know, if we want to play it a little bit more full and rich, that's a great chord shape and a great riff to do in there. The one other way to, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you how to play this, and this is probably my favorite way to do it, is we're going to leave the chords out all together, and we're just going to do the slide. So just, or the three-note version. You can do whichever you like. But when the bass player goes to the G chord on the downbeat, we don't play at all. We just come in where the slide would be. And when we go to the C chord, and that really opens it up. If you're playing with a singer, um, they're going to love you if you play it this style, you know, or when someone's soloing. We want to think less is more, and we want to keep it open. If, you, if we want it big and full, we go ahead and play the full ninth chords. But if we want to open it up, this is a much better way to do it, okay? What I want to be able to do is show you how these sound over a track. So we're going to play with the rhythm track. I'll show you these examples, and then I'll go ahead and show you a couple of other things that you can do to spice it up a little bit.